Power Shell Pro Tips. <laughs> that was the best. So if you didn't I love know, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly is the producer of the Power Shell Podcast. So he and uh, he's done a lot of good work there. But uh, if you didn't know Power Shell Podcast, it's a weekly podcast, meaning there's been a ton of episodes. We've been doing it for like two years. And, you know, I have some favorites. There's a lot to choose from. So I have a little curated list of some of my favorite moments that I'd like to share with you. Maybe get you inspired to start power shelling. Maybe start listening to some of the podcast. Um, but the first one, you know, we have different topics. We talk to people in DevOps, developers. Uh, this one was a security talk, though. Somebody who is a pen tester working in the AD space a little bit and was talking about how to actually make changes and some of the mistakes they made earlier in their career and about how, you know, just being the IT sysadmin who gets up and does it isn't always the right play. Sometimes you do need to talk to people. So let's play that clip. Maybe. A lot of times, and I experienced this myself, was I was a young buck, like IT admin going into security. Like I wanted to like, fix stuff, right? I want to make the organization more secure. So what do you do? You, you cowboy and you fix stuff, right? Like, you know, that's, that's the, the, the mental framework I was in was like, there's an issue. I know how to fix it. So I'm just going to go fix it. Uh, the problem is production systems rely on that thing that you just uninstalled. So <laughs> it's probably bad. So you lose trust that way. So I quickly learned that that's probably not a good approach. I should probably like communicate with the different teams and like say, Hey, what are we using this for? Is there a plan to upgrade it? What can we do to kind of like mitigate this, this issue? Um, that's how you win trust. That's kind of how you build relationships better, but it's hard. It's not easy to have those conversations and say, Hey, like this thing's broken. Yeah. I think we found that a lot in episodes with people. The limitations with getting things done in orgs isn't technical. Oftentimes it is about communication and collaboration. Like it's a people problem that needs to be addressed by like good communication, good culture, good practices, good security standards. Yep. True. And Josh, you know, knowing you, you haven't said this before and when I appreciate sure or anything, but I feel like you also give some credence to the other side where they're like, you don't want to get caught in the trap of getting approval for every single little thing. Sometimes you got to just make changes and do what you can. Um, but finding that kind of middle ground where you're also considering others. Yeah, I think is like it, there's the balance. Like if, if you know the organization, you know how it operates, you know what it relies on. You're able to kind of navigate that line a little more easily. And you know when you can fall on the scream test side versus the, we better have a conversation about this side. Yep. So that was the first one. Next, we have a, from an interview with Phil Bossman, Microsoft MVP, big community person. Um, on the podcast, we talk about PowerShell a lot and in this clip, we talk about how PowerShell can be used as a way to understand systems better, how to automate, and it's more than just solving one problem you're dealing with. It's sort of about paving the way for your future in IT. So let's play when that When you clip. use PowerShell to interact with things like this, you end up finding a lot about the technology under the covers. Because mm -hmm. anybody can click around in an event viewer and maybe find a thing or two for one or two problems that you're currently looking at. doesn't mm -hmm. scale very well. When you're able to actually interact and dive deeper and create these solutions, you're able to actually understand what's going on under the hoods and it's not magic anymore, which is what PowerShell, the, one of the biggest things it's given me is the ability to actually understand what the heck is going on. Yeah, and I think you can also then interact with the system, but also um, make change in the system. I can then change things in my environment based upon what I've learned and react to it effectively. And so, because now you have the tooling to then do other things, get event logs, get one event, is something just to get stuff. But then what I also want to do is when something happens, I want to do something. And so again, we're, we're just stepping through the iterative process of PowerShell at that point. True. Uh, a lot of people I talk to, they talk about the way that PowerShell has been transformational. It has been for me as well. And, you know, we keep things kind of professional, kind of motivational at times, but we definitely dip our toe into the water of some off the beaten path moments. The, the fun thing about the, the podcast is a little informal. You get to see people's like authentic self. Yes, completely. You do. And for me, one of the hugest takeaways I've had from the, you know, having the honor of interviewing these people week after week is that people who I thought were like wizards and special people who were unique. No, no, no. <laughs> they are completely normal people. Yeah. Maybe they've spent more time on X technology, but they have the same challenges. It's, it's very similar. Yeah. I mean, a lot of humility there. But yeah, we got some crazy moments too. Um, when you get people feeling comfortable, kind of letting loose a little bit, you know, sometimes they might let a couple birds fly. So let's see this clip from Jeffrey Snover. Their answer was, you know, <laughs> I, I'm busy. That's amazing. Yes. I never thought that I would see that. 
Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, that's the inventor of PowerShell, kind of letting loose, talking about some of the challenges he had on his way to getting PowerShell into where it is today. Um, definitely took me for a surprise. I remember being on that and texting Kelly, double birds at eight minutes. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Because you got to like take notes of that, like, this is a good part. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it could be on YouTube or not or whatever, but yeah, it was, he was feeling himself, which I love. I love when people feel comfortable and can speak authentically. Mm -hmm. Doesn't always need to be this like, hello, I'm running for the head of IT. Um, <laughs> is that your authority voice? I know, yes. but I like okay, that. Okay, I like, it. Talking I like this it. Way, yeah. You better listen. <laughs> Kind of had an accent there. I like it. <laughs> I mean, it feels like um inspired by Boardwalk Empire a little bit. Well, yes. like, Batters up for three forty nine. Yeah, I get that. Wow, I like this. Kelly, watch out! You got to run for your money here. <laughs> yeah, eighteen yeah. hundreds radio. Here I come. <laughs> um, but you know, let's get into something a little inspirational because okay. you know I, I live in this space of helping people with their PowerShell journey, and you know I've had my own journey, which has been pretty transformational. Ended up leading me to PDQ, which was a goal of mine, a dream really. Um, and in that same inter interview with Snover, we talked about how PowerShell can change lives and some of our favorite parts about that. So let's see that. You know, we talk about it all the time. We love the, the coolness of the tech and how efficient it is, but also that real world impact of really changing lives. It, it doesn't take a lot to really have a big impact on someone's life. And it's just cool that we get to experience the best of both worlds with PowerShell. Yeah, I tell you, that is the best thing in the world, you know, to, to go to a conference or something and and then to just have uh, people just tell the, their story, how the tool was able to help them in their career, how it made them the hero of their company, and how they were then recognized and rewarded for it. And the number of people who told me that, they, you know, they got promotions, they doubled their salary. Some people, well, actually quite a few people tripled their salary. Now, if you think about it, tripling your salary, that is a life-changing thing. And so, you know, look, to be clear, PowerShell was always, always, always about the users. And so then when you see it having that effect on the users, well, I just gotta say, you know, touchdown, success. And I just love it. As I'm watching that clip, I am reacting with my head the same exact way. I'm like, oh, stop. <laughs> it, it's fun to hear Jeffrey Snover say, PowerShell was always about the users. Yep. Right? It wasn't about the tool. It wasn't about getting something done. It was always about the users. Um, and, and I think that's inspirational. And when you, when you started that clip, uh, you could see his face kind of light up. Like, this changes lives. Yes. Right? I mean, that is the exciting part. It's like you can learn PowerShell in your job and do some cool stuff. But then also, you can do just a little bit more work, maybe tweak it a little bit and have this profound impact and be part of the community. Um, so if you haven't yet, check out the PDQ Discord, discord.gg slash PDQ. We have an awesome PowerShell scripting channel. I've been given some uh, script advice. There've been some cool things. We have powershelldle.com. We've been working on some of those lately. PowerShell is amazing. Oh, it's so good. Thanks for watching this segment from PDQ Live. If you like this, you'll love the full show. Check it out every Thursday at 10 a.m. Mountain. Oh, and like and subscribe. Please?